now I'd like to call on Tanya Callender. She's the executive director and she's the local project leader at ACDPN, the African Canadian Development and Prevention Network. Uh, ACDPN operates in the neighborhoods of the English speaking black community in Montreal. And Tanya is going to speak to us about the benefits of the GPS project's interventions to socially isolated seniors. Good morning, everybody. So, uh, as Michael said, uh, my name is Tanya Callender, and I'm the executive director of ACDPN. And uh, we're going to do the quiz later about what that stands for, but cheat notes are right here. Um, one of the main objectives of the network when we started out was uh, to kind of bring together people who have expertise people in the community and organizations that serve the English-speaking black community kind of under one umbrella to kind of work together and um, not duplicate services and kind of see how we can get together and offer uh, support to the English-speaking black community. So as English-speaking Quebecers, we are a double minority. So we have the language issue, but there's also the issue of culture. And um, although language is very important, you'd be surprised how um, important it also is for our seniors to be able to relate to the people with whom they're dealing and we have found that in our project. So I'm going to give you just a quick uh, demographic profile of the English-speaking black seniors in Montreal. Uh, some of these actually stood out to me. I mean, we, we work with our seniors, so we know them, and even some of the stats for me were, were kind of surprising. So uh, you can't really read it, but 11.4% of the English-speaking black community in Montreal are seniors. So that's still a little bit over uh, 1 in 10. 26.4% um, of them live uh, below LICO. So we spoke about that earlier. That's really people who are strained. Um, 44.9 percent of our English-speaking Black seniors live with an income of twenty thousand dollars or less. So that stat for me was unbelievable. I, I, I knew that there was a need. We see it every day, but that's almost like half of them are, are really struggling. Um, and 32.4 percent of them live alone. So if you combine uh, living alone with living below LICO and living with a reduced means we knew right away that this project was something we wanted to get involved in. And in the territories that we serve, uh, based on the stats by Joanne, there are 2,200 seniors who uh, are affected by these uh, stats. That's, that's kind of a lot. So um, this is kind of a summary of what our ACDPN GPS project looked like. So we had six uh, active volunteers, two of whom are here with us, and we had four registered, 14 registered seniors. And what we found at the beginning was that there was a, a little bit of a resistance in kind of identifying yourself as a socially isolated senior. So there, was, there was a lot of um, resistance to being given that tag, although we're willing to participate, having the actual name uh, seemed to be something that they struggled with. So we had 14 registered seniors, but as you'll see as we go along, we had a lot more participate in a lot of our events. Uh, so we had 20, sorry. So the contacts that we made in the summary, we had 25 group sessions, uh, 51 home visits, and 333 calls. Astonishing. Uh, Petrina, Denise, uh, Marilyn, it became weekly, if not twice weekly, and there were some seniors that I think Petrina spoke with on the regular. Kind of a, a friendly call, I would say, that turned into a friendship. So when we started uh, with the program, we had basically four uh, objectives in mind. So the first one being to reduce social isolation, um, promoting healthy habits, uh, being a bridge to the public services, and developing a community family. So for us, um, we kind of went about our approach a little bit differently. And uh, we did what we called our Senior Summer Club. So when we set out to do the Senior Summer Club, we thought if we could have the seniors meet for 12 weeks in the summer, get them out of the house, get them active, give them some information, some health information that they might not otherwise have. We would kind of hit all of kind of our targets that we were trying to accomplish in a simple 12 week pre-designed program. It turned out to be so, 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 so much more than that. So I brought with, I brought with uh, me some pictures. Um, so this event here was a, a workshop about health. And as you can see, we have a full house. I mean, the seniors came out. Uh, Daniel has been, I think, present at every single event uh, since June. He does not miss one. And according to Denise, he literally calls and is like, okay, so when's the next thing happening? So uh, our, I think we accomplished what we set out to do by reducing isolation, because Daniel, uh, who's um, having some issues with his sight, some challenges with his sight, was isolated. He did not get out much, although he has a daughter who's very uh, involved. It was still very tough for him. So. 
Heal the Testament, see him right there. <coughs> He's in all the pictures. Um, the second one next to it, we did an intergenerational Scrabble tournament. So it's just one of those type of events where we bring together youth, pair them with seniors, and it's just a question of getting out, having somewhere to go, having something to do, doing something fun and making connections. So the second um, part of our, uh, second objective I would say is um, promoting healthy habits. So uh, within the black community, we have certain um, things that afflict us more than others, diabetes, high blood pressure. So we wanted to make sure that we were able to talk to our seniors, give them the information that they might not otherwise have access to. Um, it, it's not easy, they're not on the internet. Uh, a lot of them do not have family doctors. So we decided to take the opportunity amidst all the fun and also try to disseminate some important uh, health information. Uh, the Community Health Education Program is supported by CHSSN and there are live video conferences on different topics. So this one was osteoporosis and medical emergencies. So what we did was we brought them out in a group setting, gave the information, we had a nurse from the CLSC in the room, and we tried to, although make it fun, give them information that they might not otherwise have. Building bridges. A uh, big challenge, oh, you're in the picture. <laughs> So I met the gentleman from the Alzheimer's Society. Um, so what we try to do is ACDPN, as we, we support the seniors in the ways that we can, but there are limits to what we can do. So one of our main, main goals is connecting them with the health and social services that already exist. A lot of them are very reticent, there, there's a lot of uh, mistrust, they're fearful, kind of some of the things that you've heard before. So we try to do it in a group setting where we bring the professional in to a, a, one of our events. They get a chance to meet and talk with the seniors. So when you're going to the Alzheimer's Society and you're going to the Perform Center at Concordia, all of a sudden, Thelma's not a stranger. She's somebody that you've dealt with, that you've been with, that you've had an experience with. And that increases the likelihood that they will actually reach out. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, for um, the Perform Center, a group of our seniors actually went together with Denise to one of their first activities. And that's kind of how we integrated um, the seniors into other services, and we call it like a warm referral. So as opposed to giving them a flyer and hoping they go, well, we try to go with them or invite the people in to the center and create kind of a, a, a situation where there's not a stranger. Uh, this was another one we did on uh, Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Uh, this young woman works with seniors who are victims. She has a lot of information. We wanted to make sure that she was able to come out. And now that they know her, I think they feel comfortable. If they have to call her, she's not just someone that they're calling and sharing all of these things with. It's someone that they met uh, previously. Uh, the last one that we talked about was um, creating a community family. Uh, so we had a lot of conversation in, in the room about uh, building trust. And Patrina said to me, we didn't have that issue. Like, uh, uh, it's a huge issue, and we can see how it can affect the programming. But because we're a cultural community, we do have that small community feel. And some of these uh, women could be my grandmother, and I think they see us as their potential granddaughters. So the trust, building the trust, it does take time, but it's not as hard. So they came right in, and they brought their friends. And before you knew it, it was a party. And every week, we had everybody there. So you would be surprised how open they are once they feel like they can connect with you. And Denise and Petrina are just extraordinary. So they have been, um, I would say, like second family. Some of these um, people come from the islands. I come from Barbados. And I always think to myself, my grandparents um, in the community, everybody knows each other, everybody's always out, it's always warm. If you come here, you live in Montreal, five out of six of the months, you don't want to go outside. You have low income, none of your family's here. All of a sudden, the situation is, is, is it can be pretty sad. So for us, we were um, hell-bent on making sure that we tried to create that same type of community feel here in Montreal. Oh, look down, you're dancing. <laughs> Shaking it up. The seniors were everything to us. Petrina, Denise can attest. We learned so much from them as much as I think that they learned from us. And whenever we had a seniors event at the center, it's like the air is filled with a joy and a kind of a life, a lifetime of experience, a lifetime of happiness, a lifetime of stories. And we look forward, we look forward to it so much, I think as much as them at this point. And it's something that we're gonna definitely try to continue. Oh, the volunteers. So this is a, a sh you can't really see it, but uh, Katrina's there and Denise is there, myself, and uh, the rest of our volunteer teams. I don't think, um, and I think this lady is a testament to it, the volunteers are the soul of the program. Without the, the volunteers giving tirelessly, giving of themselves, 
being open, it would not be uh, what it was. For sure, I can invite a bunch of seniors to an event, but without the Katrinas and the Denise holding their hands and talking to them and being close to them, I don't think that it would have been what it was. So they they are really um, to be commended. It, without them, there is no uh, program. I'm a volunteer for ACDPN and I'm also a volunteer for Seniors Action Quebec. I got involved with um, ACDPN. I was doing an intern and after my intern was finished, I really wanted to stick around and do some community work. I saw the need because I love people. I love making them laugh. Um, I see the joy when I'm around, so I'm like, okay, I, I need to, I need to be here. Um, I spoke to a lot of the seniors sometimes on weekends during the week to check up on them to see how they're doing. Ah, the calls makes a big difference. Sometimes they they're there waiting just for somebody to call and say hi. How was your day? How are you doing? Is there anything I can help you with? If there's a doctor's appointment, I'm not a doctor, but whatever little advice I can give, I, I do my best or I, I refer them to. The training that all the volunteers received for the SAQ program was very informative and uh, insightful into how to uh, relate to, uh, to seniors. Um, I felt for me personally because I have a dad who is a senior and also has lost his, uh, his sight. And um, I was always like trying to help him uh, in uh, like to say, for example, hold his hand and he was very resistant and I couldn't understand it. But uh, when I received the training, I, I, it, it opened up my, my mind as to this was a man that was losing his independence and autonomy and, uh, and he didn't want to lose that. You know, so it made me be more uh, patient uh, with him and also help me also when I'm working with the seniors to be more patient. I, I am a patient, I always thought I was very patient but it made me uh, aware that um, that uh, a lot of the seniors are losing uh, their independence you know and they, and they do need support and they do need uh, assistance and they do need um, somebody to, to be there for them. Being a volunteer it's, it's an amazing thing. It's a good feeling. You feel a relief that you can give people give people advice on certain situation or problems they're facing. It's and I think more people should get involved in, in, in volunteering. It it helps you because you never know who you might meet. You might be going through something or need information on something and there you go. I learn from the from the from the seniors. I learn a lot and they learn from me as well. So hats off to ACDPN and I will forever be a volunteer. So I think overall for us at ACDPN, um, this project, uh, we kind of had an idea what we wanted to do with it when we got in. Um, we saw the need um, as we did it. We started off with weekly uh, meetings and they turned into bi-weekly, sometimes uh, all the time, basically during the summer summertime and it was supposed to be over in September, it has gone on. So we, saw, we knew there was a need, we saw that there, there, it still exists, but I think some of the information that the seniors got, as well as some of the information that we got from the seniors, has equipped us to kind of modify the program a little bit. So uh, going forward, we're gonna try to do everything we can to keep it going, I, I don't think we have much of a choice. Uh, Daniel wants to know what's going on next week, so we're gonna have to uh, uh, figure something out. Uh, but for us, it has been um, amazing. The, the, the last thing uh, before I, I get cut off by Michael is um, the senior group got together and they wrote a poem about the um, impact that this uh, program had on them. So I'm going to ask her now, I'm going to uh, go over for Michael. Uh, she's going to read it. And this was a labor of love. I think they met two or three times to kind of get it right. And it's, I think it summarizes um, what, what they got out of it. We are part of the C A C D 
PN community. We have found a family here. We welcome together. We laugh together. We sing and dance together. We learn to love each other. We eat together. We cry together. We learn new things together. We have found help. We have found faith. We have built a community of support and trust. We are no longer alone. We are part of the ACDNP community. We have found a family here. Questions? Do you believe that poverty is the most significant factor affecting that isolation, basically lack of money, lack of resources to be able to get help? For us, I would say uh, yes, definitely. Uh, this, the poverty is something that I think within our community, a lot of seniors are afraid to kind of share that they have going on. So um, when you're in that situation, you tend to kind of stick to yourself and stick to people that you know, so you don't let people into your lives. Uh, we actually have connected with a food bank, and every Tuesday, the seniors, uh, they sign up and they come, and they pick up the, the stuff from the food bank. Denise uh, takes it to those who cannot get out. So it wasn't part of the plan, but we see the need absolutely. And I think in our community, sometimes it's a reason to stay away because you don't want people to kind of know what's going on. What are some of the traits that you're looking for in volunteers? It's a, it's a desire to give. I mean, if you have a little bit of yourself that you can share with someone, that was what we were looking for, and that's what we found. And then once you're in it, you kind of, uh, for us, I mean, these people are like our family now. So any additional things they need, we find the time, we find the help. So going in, I think it's really just um, a giving spirit. Hi, I'm just curious. I noticed you uh, had a couple of events for integration. I was wondering how the transportation was taken care of to get these isolated seniors to the center. So we have um, our centers here in Cote d'Ange, and a lot of our seniors are from LaSalle and uh, NDG. So we actually, we have a health promotion program that's supported by the CHSSN, so we use some of the transport for, for that. And Denise tirelessly driving around Montreal. Every so often, uh, we offer her a gift card, but again, it's that type of giving spirit. I mean, if Myrna needs to get here this morning, then Denise is there to pick her up. But no, there's no doubt about it, the transportation was underestimated for sure. You said that you had a lot of your volunteers you got through word of mouth. Does that mean through your a membership to different our newsletter or local newspapers? How did you um, recruit the volunteers? So there are like a couple of churches in Montreal that everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. So we approached the gatekeepers. So for example, Denise's mom was um, a very prominent member of the church in LaSalle. So we sent Denise trotting out there to kind of talk about the program. <laughs> uh, this is where we did our Alzheimer's Society uh, Canada workshop. So when we say word of mouth, it's really my neighbor told me that you have this program and people at the church know who is in need of support, and it just kind of works in little circles. But Montreal is a, it's a huge area, but the black community is, is rather small, and everybody kind of knows everybody, so we were lucky in that sense. 